Welcome to Meg's Motorcycle Journey, where we explore the world on two wheels. This channel will follow me on my journey to become a better rider and explore my love of all things motorcycles. Hey guys, we're here at Harley Davidson of Williamsport. I'm really excited because they have a Pan America and it has an adjustable seat height, which I've had trouble finding and they're gonna let me test ride it. I'm gonna have to use the like one leg technique, so I'm sort of nervous, but excited because I hear amazing things about the bike. So stay tuned. There she goes. I don't even know if I could sit on that. <laughs> no, I, I can. Can you? You can, it's, and it's, he's uh, not that much taller than me. Yeah. Like, well, like leg-wise. That much. Like, or, I, I think your legs are probably longer I have long I mean. legs, yeah. but, and with these, that gives me another two inches. Mm -hmm. It's a fun bike to ride, though. Oh, yeah. They're super quick, though. Really snap. Is that really? That's how much? It's funny because like, you know, this is like a new thing, but like when the live wire came out, that thing was like so cost prohibitive that even if you rode it and you thought it was cool, nobody could afford it. What's the sticker on that? 21394. It's way cheaper than live wire, right? Uh, yeah, the live wire was like a 30s? Well, yeah, they were like 40 oh, They were okay. starting right at 29. Crazy. And now they're their own entity. No, they stopped making them. Right? No, they they, 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 hard, they made them. I think the whole Harley sold them, right? Yeah, they, they were kind of novelty bikes. Have you worked one? So, uh, so our buddy has one, and I sat on it, and he was like, "Take it for a spin." But where we were, I was not at all like comfortable taking it for a spin. So it was like another time, and then coming in, getting it wrapped. Um, it's been getting wrapped for like two months. months. Crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, no matter where you go, it's hard to find people to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. We'll, we'll give it a whirl and see if Let's I can. Let's go sit on it first, yes, huh? Definitely. Did you all ride up? Yeah. We yeah, we rode up. That's all for right now. So he explained to me that you can, there's a seat height lowering, but that's different than like the adjustable suspension when you're riding, which the bike automatically does when you slow down. Okay. Come up here. In here, you can put it in there. Got you can put it, it down the there. Bottom I see what you're saying. He said you could also do the super reach, maybe. Yeah, actually, with the super reach. Basically, what they would do is they cut this out. Okay. Just, your seat just, left just to make it, yeah. But, like, they have, do they make a Super Reef with, for this model right now? They do? Do you have it here? No. Okay. Uh, I think you'll be fine. Let's see. Swing a leg up there. I mean, you're towing it. Barely. Barely. I don't know. Right? Probably. I'll try to get it. 
I mean, I would just be, like I said, just use that lean technique at red lights. Yeah. So just not stop a lot. To get it off the stand. You so, got it? Now stand her up and you have to go past to the right leg. Go to the other side. Okay. It's actually not heavy. No, absolutely. So, like, that's what you this way. Now, can you get back on the stand? Yeah. Same thing, you have to go to your right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're on it. Once, once it's locked in, now you're gonna so, make it. Do you have any Lou Rider recipes here? Yeah, I do. Okay, have you felt that pain in the ass kicks in? Her, hers is bad, man. Like, I, I mean, she's broken it twice now. Yeah. Once. Any of them, I think, the straight stance is pain in the ass. Yeah, so, yeah. I like the one on his breakout a hundred times better than mine. Yeah. And even my sporty used to have a way better kickstand. Like this one, it's awful. Like yeah. you have to like lean it and push it in. And, yeah. Usually what I do is as soon as I put my kick in the end, it locks in and I set it down. You know, so yeah. wait a second, there's like 19,000 buttons. Will I need to push anything in particular? <laughs> So. Um, if you're just going on a test rod, I'm going to say no. No. Okay. Um, but along the buttons, this is naturally at your start button, that's your ignition. This is the... That's your hazards. That's your mode. So Don't drive throughout it. You have to change your mode. Changing the mode will actually fairly easy. So let me ask you something about uh, what it what did he tell you what they oh, yeah, the ring? Ring. There's your store button. That's when you're gonna get your best performance. Is that like for off-roading or just for any time that you want? If you're going my opinion, if I was gonna do off-roading, I would keep the sport button. Yeah. It's gonna give you the best RPM and best performance in general. Some people's gonna say they were right over there. Oh, there's like a dirt bike? Is that yeah. a little dirt bike? There's like a little dirt bike off road right there? That's cool. Yeah. So, right. you know, for me, I mean, I've rode off road bikes yeah, and, yeah. and dirt bikes yeah. and stuff, so I would rather have it. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen the tires that they want to add on for no. the tires? Oh my god. I, they are freaking big hands. Really? So these are like road tires, but you can switch yeah. them out? Yeah, but her basic road tire, but you can use them. So if it were Mike, he would just take it anywhere because he will literally ride his. I grew, I grew up on. I grew up on dirt bikes, so she, she's like all impressed about the re riding off road, but it's, no, it's just grass. That bike is not meant to ride off road, Michael. It doesn't have off road tires. It goes off road. Um. The million dollar bogey takes his off road. Yeah, did he break it though? He breaks everyone he rides. You think I'm okay, Mike? Try it again. See how I do.
Just take your time with that. Now you're centered, you're on tiptoes, right? Yeah. But if I stop, then I'm going to have to leave. Exactly. There you go. It's not heavy though, right here. Like, I feel like it's lighter than my bike. No, it's lighter than your bike. But it I, looks bigger, like it looks like it has more crack. The, the only real benefit is crack. So wait, let me ask you this. The adjustable suspension brings me up from here? Yes. Oh, but as soon as you stop, it drops. It's like 15 mile an hour, I think I read it. No, it drops almost as soon as you move. Like, as soon as you move. As soon as you stop. It drops it down. They got that thing hidden under there, don't they? Yeah. But this little thing right here actually makes it harder, easier, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I use the same thing. Even on like a road glide or a street glide, I, the kickstand might be harder because it doesn't have this little tab right there. Right. And I have to like really reach under. Yeah, we're good. So she just added on a uh, Memphis the Shades fairing. And I mean, I was shocked at how much it did I think when I rode it. It's not giving you like full windshield protection by any means, but it's something. And like with the cicadas, if a couple of like last week, it was literally like, yeah, we were dodging them and I was like, swinging my leg. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, Let's let me suit go. Up. Get my vest on. Put on some your helmet. Gloves. Helmet, we'll and I gotta get the GoPro out. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get the uh, Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back. Thank down. you. Might be alright. Yeah, you'll be just fine. I don't know. <laughs> I'm too no, This is too high. It's very high. So unfortunately, this is what happened to a good portion of our footage, which was very frustrating, but we did get a couple minutes of some decent footage. So this is me riding the Pan America. You'll hear a few of my thoughts at the end of the riding footage when I get back to the dealership as far as how I felt about the bike. You could probably tell I was incredibly nervous to get on the bike because of how tall the bike was. Um, my inseam is not... I think the bike sat at, with a lower seat height, 34, and I think my inseam measures at like 31 and a half, 32. So it was really a stretch for me to get on and off the bike and you saw me trying to work with the kickstand it did give me an opportunity to work on the single leg method i had as you saw watched a video on doodle on a motorcycles channel about that and i'd also watched a video of a woman that rides dirt bikes that does that same technique. Basically, when you are stopped at a stoplight or a stop sign or for any reason, you rest the bike on your left leg, leaving your right leg on the rear brake. I was able to do that. I was a little uncomfortable initially, but I got more and more comfortable as the ride went on. The bike really was a very nice bike. I was really impressed with the performance. It was an incredibly smooth ride. Once I started going, I had no issues at all. It felt light. It felt nimble. Turning the bike was very easy, which I don't always find to be the case with larger bikes that I've ridden. I felt like I was surprised at how easy it was to maneuver. Sport mode, which I did try at the very end, I did feel like I noticed a difference in the handling of the bike. It was quick, but it was still so smooth. Every bump that I went over was so much less noticeable than it is certainly on the touring bikes and the cruisers that I have ridden. So that was really cool. I have ridden dirt bikes before, 
never one that was huge. All the dirt bikes I've ridden were significantly smaller because I'm not a big gal and I don't really need a giant dirt bike. But this was certainly a new and enlightening experience. And for all of those of you who have told me that you want to ride it, you should truly go out and give it a try. I do wish I'd had the opportunity to ride it on dirt. Pretty good. Yeah, I was more so worried about this one than the R1 just because of the height. What about like this versus the first time I got on a touring bike? Nah, this. Really? Yeah, because it's so high off the ground. And like, I don't care how good you are, if you can't reach the ground. I mean, I could, I was like top of my tippy toes. I, you were literally on a toe on each foot. <laughs> there was no tippy toes. It was one toe per okay. foot. I think, like, when we test rode the Indian Challenger and the street guy gliding the road glide, I was probably actually more comfortable in this once I got moving than the touring bike. So when you were moving, this was more comfortable. And even coming to a stop, once I got used to it, yeah, you was seemed more to... comfortable than a touring bike for me. Okay. Because so even on the street drive and road glide, not because it's high, but because my legs are so wide, yep. I'm tippy toeing also. Not as bad as that, but it's so heavy and I can feel like a thousand pounds of weight. Yeah, yeah, thing I can so we went like fine actually. Yeah. Once I started yeah, going, awesome. I, I thought you were. I, was, I, I was comfortable. I mean, Some people I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I was comfortable. Once we started going, it was fine. Yeah. Um, Once we, I saw her stop and start two or three times, I felt better about it. I mean, coming out of here was the, at the first test, and then stoplight was the second test. And, but I, I was telling him that honestly, even though it's so high, once I got used to it, I actually felt more comfortable stopping and starting than I do like a full King. touring bike. Um, because I. And the touring bike gets way lower, obviously, but it's so wide that I'm still on tiptoes a lot of times. But I can feel all like a thousand pounds of that weight yeah. on a full touring bike where this thing feels rather light. So it was actually, yeah. actually pretty nice. But if I were going to get one myself, I would definitely get that low seat that you said. Because yeah. I think if I could get two more inches, I'd be really comfortable on it. It'd be yeah. fun, actually. But yes, take note, Harley. <laughs> Probably think about helping us little people challenge people that still want to ride motorcycles. Yeah. So anyway, thank you very much. Awesome. So guys, I um, test rode as I told you before in the little clip the Pan America. Um, huge thank you to Harley Davidson of Williamsport um, for letting me test ride it. Um, I was pretty nervous because probably saw I could barely barely touch the ground and this is with the adjustable seat in the low position so it also has adjustable suspension um, which I did some reading about but actually the suspension starts low and comes up high once you're moving so um, it lowers as you stop right so that actually did not help at all with the height of the bike but I really liked it it did sort of have a dirt bike feel definitely did way better on like bumps on the road like we went over a patch i all you guys that are riders know this like when they tear up the road and it's bridged and on a regular bike it almost feels like you're hydroplaning or it feels very unbalanced this thing handled that like a champ every bump i went over was way way smoother than on my low rider s or really any other harley i've ridden um it really rides very smoothly which was pretty cool i would say that um i don't know i'm used to like i feel like my bike has more like get up and go but more, more power out of it yeah, yeah more power definitely. torque 
Well, I mean, this but, is 1250, right? That's true. Um, but the ride itself was incredibly smooth. I did actually accidentally start off in off-road mode. I switched it to road mode, and then at the very end, I switched it to sport mode. And I could tell a difference, definitely between off-road and sport mode. Um, I guess I sort of did it gradually. Um, yeah. But I did not try all of the functions because I'm Did you change the clutch? No, before I started, he... Moved so it. one of the cool things that this bike can do is you can adjust the clutch here and you can also adjust the brake. So before I started off, he did ask me that. The brake felt a little tight. Actually, the clutch felt like it wasn't tight, but once I started going, I wished that I had turned it down a little because it was pretty tight. Or maybe it's just that I get so nervous that I'm clenching, hard to say. Um, Sit on again, just so I can show your feet. As I mentioned, huge thank you to Harley Davidson of Williamsport uh, and Mike in sales over there. They were so kind and accommodating and allowed me to come on really short notice and take this bike out for a spin. I will tell you that I had a lot of relief getting back on my lowrider S because it's just so much easier for me to touch the ground. I didn't realize how nervous that would make me having a really really high bike like that but it was a cool experience like I said once we were moving that bike was a dream it handled every bump it handled the road construction that we hit that where the road was all torn up and bridged so easily it turned very easily maneuvered really well cameraman and I are interested in both getting as I've mentioned before a touring bike and possibly also either a dirt bike or an adventure bike or maybe a sport bike we would like to add to our collection in order to use them on this vlog on our channel and be able to do some varied things so it was really cool to ride I did want cameraman to have an opportunity to ride but we kind of had to get out of there so he didn't take an opportunity to ride plus he can ride anything he's been riding his whole life and has ridden lots of different dirt bikes on road off road as you heard he sometimes takes his breakout off road which obviously a breakout is not an off road bike but he does it anyway anyway um it was a really good time and it was fun to be able to do that this was also a beautiful area to ride so if you have the opportunity to visit the harley davidson in williamsport maryland you should give it a go and check out what they have to offer i am really excited because we're going to ride the dragon next week also we got cameraman's seat we will be doing a seat review on that shortly it is a saddleman step up so he'll be putting that on his breakout as i've mentioned his stock seat tends to get waterlogged so we are both really excited to see how that works out on his bike so stay tuned for that i also have a pretty fun episode coming up this sunday for father's day don't forget to check out our patreon channel the link is in the description and until next time don't forget to like and subscribe and ride safe guys